I've got a fantastic course for you here now and it's going to seriously aid your trading. It looks at an ancient Japanese chart type called line breaks and with today's technology you can fabulously merge that in with what I would call Western techniques, the things you're probably more familiar with to create some really powerful strategies. So why line break? Great for trend analysis and even better for calling the turns. What do I mean by calling the turns? Those reversals, whether it's to the up or downside, incredibly hard to consistently call. And this chart type, line break, really does help you. And it will also help your discipline, consistency, and a whole bundle of other stuff around your trading. And I'm gonna go into the nuts and bolts of line break charts, go through loads of examples, pull it all to pieces, and show you how you can successfully apply it in your trading. But before we get into the bulk of the course, let's have a look at an example. So let's take a look at an example of what we could be achieving by the time we complete this course. Now, here we have the US Russell 2000 stock market index, and it's been turned into a line break chart. And I hope you notice how different it looks to a normal bar or candlestick chart. And also the fact that it doesn't involve time. Although there's time down there on the axes, it's not really existing in the normal context that we understand it in and on top of that I've added another Japanese concept of the Ichimoku cloud that I've refined and below that I've used a Western uh, stochastic indicator to further aid the analysis and get me in and out and timing better with the trades and I could use our the blue line that you can see is a moving average that you could use for stop loss and maybe for trailing and getting you out of the trade but this is sort of an idea of the uh, um, concept and ideas we're going to learn around line breaks you can also see how ideally these charts spot the reversals in the trend much more visual process this type of chart and that's what makes it very effective I think uh, in the world of trading and because of that we can spot these reversals we can also determine um, very important concepts like stop loss level setting and profit and target taking so all of this and more in much more detail from within the course before we do dive into the depth of how the line break chart works. I want to firstly draw comparisons to other Japanese chart types so we can see what the line break chart um, is trying to give us in terms of its data and presentation over and above what the other chart types would do as well. Actually they are very similar uh, to each other and they share one big trait which is the concept of price movement rather than focusing on time of Renko, Kagi and line charts like I say all focus on price movement rather than time but they are actually visually slightly different they're all calculated slightly different and that in turn gives you a different angle or edge once you're trading and why you, you maybe want to use a combination of those chart types because they're all going to give you a way into the market that say a candlestick chart, a line chart, a bar chart or you know any of these new types of chart type would give you so we're always looking for the edge, the difference and the line break chart does give you that and another advantage of the line break chart over Renko and Gaggy that is there's no user defined inputs to, to, to determine the bar size other than the length of the line break chart for example 2, 3, 5, 10 and as we go through the next few sections you'll understand exactly what I mean but for you and me that means it's actually easier and quicker to set up a line break chart over a Renko and Kagi chart 
most people and I suppose traditionally these types of chart have been seen as exotic or specialist and they've been bundled up together and haven't been that yet well used because of um, the lack of knowledge around the subject and well, the, the ability to use them within charting packages but I'm going to package these up here as the specialist chart types Renko, Kagi, Line Break, Heikinashi. There are other indicators and tools that come from Japan like uh, Ichimoku and the chart type, you know, the candlesticks, which we're very familiar with. But I want to focus in on the Renko, Kagi, and Line Break because they're three of the most similar types, but giving you that different information. So let's look at an example and we're going to look at Amazon Inc and we're going to put those three charts together the same time period same data and see what different type of results we would get so here's our three charts line break on the left Kagi in the middle Renko on the right and like I said as you can see there same data in terms of price and length of time although we did discuss that time is not really an issue but to make it more transparent then it's included here so as we can see that all three give slightly different um, representations of the same action um, in the middle we got Kagi's um, going from red to green which is bullish and vice versa and the same with Renko with its blocks on the right from red to green and green to red and then our left hand side the line break from red to green and green to red as well being but and buys and sells and sells and buys but just wanted to, you to take away from this that although that's exactly the same trading period price that actually the results are different enough that you can create sub strategies around this data, these different chart types, to give you a sort of new way in an edge, um, different granularity to your trading strategies and approach. Again, staying with Amazon, we have a candlestick chart on the left and the line break chart on the right. And what do you notice from that? Again, it's the same period of time, same price just look how much clear and fussy uh, the data in the line break chart is we can clearly see the trends we can clearly see the turnaround points in the market although it's mostly bullish we can actually see the pullbacks very clearly and we can actually and we will learn how to time those pullbacks in using the rules of line break but also the difference between you know red and green days on the bar chart being you know all mixed in together just makes trading a bit harder a bit less disciplined and prone to error and mistakes so that's another advantage of our line chart over the more traditional candlestick or even bar chart approach One concept that is well known uh, from well, some of the benefits of using Japanese charts and line break charts is no exception is that the method that they deploy in how they present the data can help you deal with trading psychology and emotion and discipline so we're going to touch on a bit of that now in more detail. Before we throw ourselves into some psychology, it will be well, it's a good place to start understanding what the line break chart is and some basics. So, what is it showing you? It's a series of vertical white and black lines, or it says there, with you know, charting packages these days, you can colour them whatever you so choose, but just remember which way they are bullish, bearish and these new lines are created based on the closing price but again you can adapt that as you get more skilled with your charting package and the line break charts and if the previous high 
is exceeded, a new bullish line is added, and vice versa for the bearish around the low. And if it stays the price within the range, then no new line is drawn. And the price continue in the same direction until we see that a reversal has been created. And here is a simple example of the pound against the US dollar line break chart it's a three line break and we can see the reds i like using reds and blacks uh, the reds are the down lines and the blacks are the up lines we can see uh, the price on the um, vertical axis and the time scale along the horizontal one although we're going to talk about the concept of time in more detail later So some more basics and we will go into the process of setting up charts in much more detail shortly but just to give an overview when we're looking at those reversals well a reversal occurs when the closing price exceeds the high or low of the prior two three four five lines whatever your setting might be to the chart and you can have a two line break chart you can have a ten line break you can have a five line break chart you can have whatever line break chart you like the three line break is the most common and most popular but there is nothing wrong with you using any other number it can sometimes be appropriate to the chart or the time frame your at a chart doesn't mean the market or the time frame you're trading around and again we will look into that in more detail soon but just to give you a further idea of what it means to change the line break chart from a three to a two, a two to a five. I've got an example here again using our pound dollar uh, currency pair. On the left, a two line break chart. On the right, a five line break chart. Same time period, same price, but just look at the difference in the granularity of the lines on the two line. There's a lot more than the five line. So I'm hoping you're starting to think how this can affect your trading, your strategies, how you get in and out, all sorts of things and questions. That should now be ringing in your head and let's now take a look at another example going back to our amazon inc earlier setup again just look at the quality of the granularity uh, difference between the two how less confused the line break chart looks like so i'm hoping you can see straight away how you know adopting the line break chart could make you a more disciplined consistent trader because what it's giving you is a lot clearer than say a candlestick or bar chart so to summarize before closing this section the the line chart uh, Renko and Kagi all do the same so does Hai Kanashi but we're looking at the line chart he'd focus on here it does its approach makes you a more systematic rule based trader and therefore more disciplined and will add consistency and because of the way it presents the data it's obvious visual analysis analysis it means less indecision in your trading you'll be more positive around your your actions and it gives you well, i think a more definitive objective results to action upon and that can also help you create strategy ideas, um, stop loss and risk management rules, as we shall see later. Work your way through the uh, following exercises. They're all designed and built to build up your knowledge and experience of line break charts so you can better understand how to manipulate and use them and turn them into trading strategies and to your advantage later. I mentioned previously that the line break chart, like other Japanese chart types, doesn't focus on time. It focuses on price movement. So let's have a look now how that impacts our line break charts. So you might have gathered by now that we've got two ways of controlling the length of these lines. The first one is by changing the main input to the line chart for example we might have a three line break chart two five ten which can speed up or slow down 
the trend. And secondly, we can impact the length of lines by changing the time period on your line break chart that you're currently looking at. So a tip for you here, so by speeding up the time frames on your charts or by slowing them down, for example, you might move from a four hour to one hour chart, the line break chart will either meet the criteria to create a new line either more quickly or slowly and therefore give you more or less granularity on the lines created. And that would mean more or less trading signals. So you can see by manipulating the inputs around the time, you can create different strategies and approaches into trading the same asset that you're analyzing. Let's take a look at a quick example back to the pound versus the dollar. On the left, we have a one hour line break chart and it's set to five line break uh, chart input. And on the right hand side, we've got a four hour chart on a two line break chart setup. And notice again how many more lines the chart on the right has versus the one on the left, even though it's a similar period of time. But again, this could create faster or slower strategies around how you play around with the two variables there. Firstly, the time and secondly the inputs to the line break system. Work your way through the uh, following exercises. They're all designed and built to build up your knowledge and experience of line break charts so you can better understand how to manipulate and use them and turn them into trading strategies and to your advantage later. Now we know how to calculate these line break charts and what they are telling us, let's now get into learning how we can actually use these charts in anger in our trading and investing. So obviously we know that they're good for trading or market analysis and they are fundamentally good on their own but just relying on that price you know, line data, I believe is quite risky and dangerous and could cost you a lot of money. Um, so my advice here is don't rely on the basic rules by themselves. What we need is a further enhancement to our uh, so I suppose initial line break analysis. And due to charting software technology these days and how it's advanced over the last 10 years, we can enhance our charts a lot further by, by boosting the predictive power of them by adding other indicators to build out some really strong trading strategies and approaches. If you're still not sure, what is the basic trading rule around the analysis we've done so far? Well, it's simple in the fact that we're just looking for a reversal in those uh, uh, line colours, whether that be from black to white or white to black, bullish to bearish, bearish to bullish. And I say in its pure basic rule form, we get the reversal and in theory we should enter either long or short when we see that reversal change of line, colour and direction. So here's the three line break chart for New York Coco. It's set to a daily uh, time frame and I've put on the stochastic indicator on there. But I just want to show you, and this, well, this is actually a very good example of a lot of them actually working in progress. But the way the trend changes from black to red and red to black, you know, bullish to bearish, bearish to bullish based on the three line break process. So we're going to pick on this example of where we had a bullish uprun and then a change back to the bearish uh, sentiment of feel to the market and a reversal in the price. So it is really quite simple to translate. 
the black line is on there as a marker to show you where you would get in as the red bar, the bearish bar, turns back down through the three previous bullish bars to be your entrance point. So as you can see, we have one, two, three up bars above that black line. That's the three line uh, break set up. The red bearish bar pulls back and it instantly triggers a short sell trade on the cocoa as it then passes through the low of that three line break setup. Now these setups play throughout the New York Cocoa chart here and some of them are very obvious and I deliberately picked this chart because it was a very good example but on their own normally it's a very risky approach to take just relying on those reversals in the bars. You would add and enhance the power of the line break chart by putting on other indicators such as the stochastic and um, in section 3 we're going to have a bit more of a dive into that but let's just summarize now what the the strength of the um, line break chart are in terms of trading potential so it can be used by itself or in conjunction with other indicators so it's a very flexible type of chart uh, tool to use is great for filtering out the trading noise as I hope we've seen already very good for spotting reversals extremely useful for spotting support and resistance patterns and trends and that's very good for risk management trade management purposes and used in conjunction with other chart types it can be uh, I suppose utilized as a trading confirmation tool as well so it's got many uses the line break chart but we need to make it more powerful, more strong, more predictive um, for our trading strategies. So we're going to move on to section three now and look at how we can actually achieve that. So in section three, we're going to look at how we can enhance the power of the simple line break chart approach by adding on other indicators and tools from both the Western Japan to give us a more powerful um, edge in our use of the line break chart. All these enhancements involve the use of technical analysis and we use pure technical analysis to execute our strategies but we do need before moving on to the individual tools that we're going to overlay onto the line break chart we do need some basic pre-strategy technical analysis rules to adhere to so we're going to cover them off briefly now before moving into the specific indicators that we are going to look at like I say to enhance the power of the line break chart. So the first of these technical analysis rules is the rule of collinearity. It's very important. You must understand it because it's going to save you a lot of pain in the long term. And it basically is to avoid the multi collinearity amid indicators. And that means uh, stop multiple counting the same type of information. So, for example, we have the RSI, MACD and rate of change. They're all based on the closing price. So why use them? Because you've got three different tools all based off the same information, probably giving you the same answers. What we're looking for is maybe three indicators coming from three different angles to give us the same answer. And that therefore means a stronger chance of our trade winning. So I have just put down a few combinations of you know, possible ones you could use, for example, the ADX, an oscillator, a moving average, uh, MACD and stochastic, the RSI and stochastic, parabolic and DMI. So we're now going to go and try and work out what we should actually be using in terms of indicators. 
Another one of those questions I get asked, asked a lot is what indicators work best? What ones should I use? Well, and I will always respond with there is no right answer to this. It depends on many things, your trading style, strategy, objectives, time frames, markets you're trying to use. But what I try to do is that if I'm especially if I'm trading across markets is try to make it as generic as possible and that they work generically. Um, there's thousands of indicators out there. You could spend a lifetime going through them and I use the ones that work best for me and it's really been a case of trial and error and back testing and learning from them. But here I'm going to give you try and give you a starting point to get you going and this is in the form of a table that you can again take with a bit like the time frame table as a useful tool in your learning. So before moving on to that table that I mentioned, so bearing in mind the rule of collinearity and the basics of technical analysis, we're looking for independent supporting evidence to our line break chart from various sources that help confirm that line break action that we've seen, whether that be off a two, three, five bar, that's what we're looking for. The more they align, the more confident we can be in our decision making and that in turn puts the probability and odds of trade success more on our side. It's quite a simplistic approach. We've got five columns, trend, momentum, volume, volatility and sentiment. And what I try to do when I'm putting a combination of indicators together is take one to start with from each or from three of them or two of them just to give me that independence. So for example, in the trend, I might take the MACD and in you know uh, momentum I might use that in combination with stochastics it's that sort of idea to get you started in your trading and like I said it's very much trial and error you know and you're going to find ones in this table that you hate um, ones that you very much like try them out see what works you know get stuck into them play around and then build a strategy around it. There's thousands of technical indicators that you could use, but for the purposes of this course, I've just narrowed it down to a few, and they are the awesome oscillator, directional movement indicator, moving averages, trend lines, RSI bands, Davis box, RSI, Donkin bands, and Fibonacci. And the next part of this course will go over those individual indicators not too in depth because also run other courses if you want to get into them but to give those less familiar with them um, some sort of context meaning behind them when I'm using them going forward so if you are familiar with uh, those types of indicator you can skip this section but you know it wouldn't hurt uh, to revisit them you might you know get something out of you know how I look at them and use them you know so up to you but definitely for newer traders unfamiliar with them please go through the next section because you'll make your understanding of the latter part of the strategies that we look at a whole lot easier can you use traditional chart patterns on line break charts well we're about to take a look Traditional chart patterns are bundled into two groups, continuation and reversal patterns. And you'll be pleased to know that both work on our line break charts, whether that be wedges, triangles, double tops, treble tops, bottoms, etc., etc., trend line strength and breakout channels, all work very well on line break charts and should be used to supplement your analysis. And they're great for finding support and resistance zones and quicker price action moves to get you in and out of line break chart setups. Just a very quick example using the FTSE 103 line break chart. Um, I've drawn on an obvious support and resistance level. You can see there with two black uh, lines touching it signifying probably a key level of uh, resistance around the 7800 area before the price fell back down and below that I just draw on a simple trend line 
Same rules apply two for a tentative trend, three touches for a full uh, classified trend. And as you can see, the price broke nicely down below 7400 all the way down to the low. So in March, April of 2020. So yes, highly effective chart patterns and very easy to apply and use on line charts. Some peculiar terminology now specific to the line break chart, the shoe and the white suit, and these are used for more cautious approaches into entering a position. The white suit is a bullish move. So we have our um, reversal candle, which is then a uh, line, which is then followed by a smaller collar white uh, line and that is the white suit and people and some traders will wait for that line to play out before entering into a long trade and the vice versa setup is the shoe again we have our down reversal line followed by a small um, bearish line and when that one concludes people traders will go in short on there so it's it's a sort of a hold back a more patient approach to using the line break chart entry of reversal method so some tips to conclude this section on chart patterns go away and play with the charts the line break charts Mix up the time frames, the inputs, you know, the two line break, the three line break, five line break. See what sort of results you get. And you can experiment around what sort of price action in regards signals you want to try and achieve. If you want lots of them, few of them, up to you. And also, like I says, they're a bit like not relying on the reversal rule. The same should be said about pure price action on the line break chart. I never use it on its own. I'd like to use it in conjunction with further indicators to confirm uh, whether something's right to go long or short on. And that's what we're now going to move on to. So now we move on to adding Western indicators, Western technical analysis on top of and beneath our line break charts. Now I'm only going through these because I use them, they work well for me, they might not work well for you, but they're certainly a good starting point to learn how to enhance your um, line break charts. It's not an exhaustive list, there's thousands of indicators and tools out there. Like I say, what works for me might not be your cup of tea, so experiment by applying your own indicators and tools onto your line break charts and formulate your strategies around there. The importance is understanding how we can enhance the charts further to make the predictive powers of the line break chart stronger. So in a bit more detail, what will I be covering off in the next few parts of section three? Well, we're gonna look at the awesome oscillator directional movement indicator, moving averages, trend lines, the relative strength indicator, bands such as Bollinger and Donkian. You might not have heard of Donkian. And the next one you might not have heard of at all. It's a Darvas box and also the very popular one of Fibonacci. We're now going to look at some of those tools and indicators I said we were going to address. In this instance, it's trends. You may know all this stuff already, but it's you know, no harm going over it, so what's a trend, general direction of a market or of the price of an asset, how do we um, measure that? Well, it's gonna go up, down, and sideways, sideways being trendless, and it's gonna have three major time classifications, six months to one year, three weeks to six months, and less than three weeks, maybe better for timing purposes. So here's our chart that shows us through the three different periods in action. We've got a longer term blue line, the longer term trend we've got green lines showing a medium term trend and then under that we've got our red short term trend so you can trade all those at the same time you might just want to trade the short term one so 
by determining the direction of the trend you're going to come up with three trading decisions either to go long go short or do absolutely nothing and stay on the sidelines and remember importantly that the market trends are roughly only a third of the time so you need to know when it is happening that's very important for what tools you're going to use So here's a quick example on the S&P 500 on a high Kanashi chart, daily chart, green arrows, short term trends, red medium, black dotted line there, the longer term trend, it's just showing you how it works on a typical market. And really the rules of trend drawing are important to know. If you have two touches on a trend line, that's only a tentative trend, you need three or more for confirmation of that trend and that's very important to know and to apply and it can be drawn on any charts even the Japanese Renko charts that we saw earlier and you've got to draw the trend lines through the lows in an uptrend and through the highs in a downtrend and it's a very discretionary a subjective trading drawing process so here's a gold chart that I actually used in Bloomberg terminal while I was trading away just giving you a simple example of a trend line that's touched multiple times by five or six before it breaks so the more touches the stronger the likelihood of that move outwards in a way and as it did in that instance it went flying high upwards here's another one Diageo PLC UK company and again this is subjective you might see trend lines in there that I don't and that's what makes it more subjective less objective approach but also very useful to your trading to understand so what applications can we use the trend line for well we can use it for price objectives um, when the trend is changing um, the strength of the trend 45 degrees is a very important number that's the ultimate optimal trend line we can use channels to bounce prices between and we can also do it for entering you know long short positions and profit loss taking and we can see here on the Hang Seng a typical channel example of the trend how the price has moved up and down in a range popped out briefly and then went back into that range so it's a very useful tool uh, trend lines so here's an exercise for you um, this is a typical blank chart find one for yourself and then just practice to your heart's content drawing as many trend lines as you can to work short medium long term so moving average is a great effective simple tool to apply onto your charts basically it's and you might have seen this in other walks of life or in your maths classes of old it is a smoothing of a time series of data it's easy to build and test it's also easy to get in a mess with and it's a very subjective process but you've got to use it as a guide to the trend more than as a trading signal but you could use it say for it exits entries in combination with other tools um, but as we said it's a smoothing of a time series and gives us that insight into what the trend actually is and takes out the noise and there's different ways of calculating exponential linear weighted some people use one some people use a combination and use crossovers of those to create signals well that can be dangerous as I'll explain shortly and on top of that there's other popular methods you know there's like the triple crossover 4 9 18 period there's a one based around envelopes of percentage of price move uh, there's the donkey and bands are based off of a four week look back period we have our Bollinger bands that use an input of a moving average to help set up analyze the de standard deviation move of the price we've got moving averages tied to cycles five day 20 day that can measure behavior um, easily and you've got indicators on top of the oscillators like MACD that use the moving average and in certain markets you know these rules can't be beaten and you know if the price is greater than say the Renko blocks and it's bullish and vice versa but there is a problem they only work when the market is trending and this is what catches people out time and time again and we need a tool that can be used to tell us whether it's trending or not and in my world I use the DMI so let's have a look at an example here. We've got Amazon, a normal candlestick chart, one week. So there's a long period of time there to have a look at. But 
we've got this set up as a Heiken Ashi chart to just smooth out the data from a standard candlestick chart and we can add the moving averages and change them around in this section here you can see we've got 50 209 20 100 all set up and we can unhide them hide them we've got the short term nine period here we can see how that interacts in and out the price as we move out in time periods we've got a longer term indicator and as they cross through the price we can actually then see yeah you, know, you know whether it's a buy or sell opportunity or it's trending or it's not trending so above is you know the price is up and vice versa so we might want a longer term look at the things what's going on Amazon and we've applied a 250 moving average here and you know the price is definitely above both in July so I'd be more bullish and then we could maybe use the nine moving average to time our way in and out of a potential trade And here's just some examples adding on further indicate uh, moving average time length indicators to mix up, you know, and as you can see, you can create various strategies around this. So these moving averages paint a picture of a trading cycle. Um, and you may have heard of the turtles. They use a four week monthly cycle to create a donkey and strategy and they made a fortune out of trading that. So some final notes on the moving averages. Pros really helpful in finding the trend direction, it helps you let profits run and you cut your losses, good for support and resistance, entries and exit and really strong for trade management as we will see. Cons doesn't always work in non-trending markets that well and people often optimise it and get in trouble because of that. We're going to take a look at band based indicators and these are bands around a you know a price range around the original price either above or below they overlay the price on the chart they can be based on percentage statistical measures volatility and they'll move with the flow of the price and we're going to look more particularly into Bollinger Bands and these are bands that are placed around a moving average at default two standard deviations away and what does this allow us to see well it allows us to see 95% of the price action and as a general rule prices are thought to be overbought when it hits the top of that band and oversold when it touches the downside although as we'll see that's not necessarily the case in all instances but they're a great tool for um, targeting you know maybe as a strategy those band levels So here's an example with gold again, a Heiken Ashi chart. So we're now going to add on the Bollinger Bands. And we're also going to add on on top of that Bollinger Band Width Indicator. There we go, both are on there. We've got the upper band, lower band, and what we call a basis line, which is that middle moving average period. That's normally set to 20 as default, and the two bands to plus minus two standard deviations. And the bandwidth there tells us how fat or thin the bands are actually going, which can give us a pinch point in price action. Normally can explode out after a narrow range in bandwidth, as we can see in the example there. So you can play around with the inputs into the Bollinger Bands if you want to create a more specific strategy. And we do that by simply going to the settings and the inputs. You know, you might want to up the standard deviations that you're looking at. You might want to expand the length of the moving average and then all of a sudden you've got a completely different look to your Bollinger Band chart you've got a pinch point there but like I said it's up to you the variables you use but try not to backfit um, the inputs so we can see how the price bounces around in our new range and how the bandwidth expands and contracts as another 
measure at all and here's a typical example of in a longer term how that pinches and then breaks up to a more bullish move but we don't actually know from the Bollinger Band which way it's going to go we just know that it is going to move and that's why we'd have to use other indicators along with it to confirm the actual move of the price So to summarise the Bollinger Bands, that you know, they're very good at creating support and resistance levels, and you can use maybe the moving average in the middle as a trailing stop level. Um, they're much better at determining the beginning of a trend and not trading between them. And when the bands tighten, that can often signify you know an explosion in the movement of the price, although we don't know which direction. And a little tip there then, if you adjust the moving average, then it's a good idea to adjust the standard deviations for example a 50 moving average you might want to make the standard standard deviations a bit bigger 2.5 you know a 10 moving average take it down to 1.5 standard deviations the relative strength indicator is another of wells wilder's inventions in the world of technical analysis and his basic thinking behind it was that in an uptrend closes tend to be higher and in a downtrend closes tend to be lower and please note that it only uses the closing price in its calculation but it does smooth out the erratic and sharp changes in price so it's sort of like a volatility calculator based off a closing price and 14 days is the normal default input if you want to speed things up take it lower if you want to slow things down move it higher it is expressed as a number between 0 and 100 so anything over 70 is viewed as overbought and anything less than 30 as oversold so what is it useful for well identifying support and resistance levels giving us overbought and oversold levels um, as a you know strategy system in itself um, trend line breaks but I like to ignore the 70-30 line that we talked about and just create a middle 50 line. And as it goes up through it, I call a buy and a down, blow it a sell. So here's gold again, our example from earlier. We add on the RSI uh, from our tri trading view charts. There it is. We're going to format that quickly because they're not my sort of colors. There we are. We put on the 70 and 30 bands see how that works we've got the 70 on the top and 30 on the below and normally when it breaks above and comes back down bearish and vice versa for the bullish time but it didn't actually happen many times over that period for gold so I want to give given you a very few signals to trade so that is why I like to look at just the 50 and I adjust that by going into the settings again So here it is with the 50 line placed on and we're going to get a lot more opportunities to buy and sell as it crosses up and down below. I've also added on here a moving average. Same principle as the 50 line but it's just a bit more proactive in finding us trading signals. But used exactly the same way as the price goes down to sell and vice versa and we can add on a trend line if we wanted to on top of the RSI and again same thing as the trend breaks we might want to buy you know you know the price goes up through the upside it might be a buy and vice versa we can use the RSI as a very strong trading tool and it works very nicely on the Renko charts as we will see later remember that I said that moving averages don't work all the time we need to know when a market is trending or ranging now this is what we're going to look at now and remember that markets trend only one third of the time that means there's two thirds of the time when they're not and we need a tool that allows us to filter whether it is or isn't and then on top of that certain indicators work better in certain time frames so you can do this very many sort of different ways and you can look you know, just by an eyeball test mathematically some rule based approach around moving averages and there's even indicators like parabolic SAR that I've used but the best one in my opinion to use is the directional moving indicator and it's developed by J Wells Wilder, Wilder in the 70s and he just wanted to work out some more mathematical systematic way of being able to measure that such a thing 
and it's made up of three parts the plus di which is the upward trend movement the minus di the downward and the average directional movement which gives you the trend range and it's normally set to 14 periods and the basic rules behind it when the di crosses the plus di crosses the minus di it's put long um, position to be taken and vice versa minus through the di plus di and greater than 25 adx it's trending unless it's ranging And if you're long, the reverse point is the low made on the day of crossing. If you're short, the reverse point is the high made on the day of the crossing. And the ADX is the is greater than minus DI or plus DI indicating a turning point. And when ADX is less than both DI lines, stop trading, get out. Um, I want to show you on gold, though, what that looks like and then how I develop the DMI further to be more effective for trading in Renko. So we've got a Heiken Ashi chart, one day gold. We're going to search our trading view charts for the directional movement indicator. We've put it on. We see our pink line there, which is set to 14. That's the ADX line. We're just going to make it a bit more visible for you. There we go. So we've got our DI plus line, the bullish line, the blue one, the bearish one, the orange line, the DI minus, and our ADX trend filter. That you can see at the moment is pretty high around, you know, above 40, meaning we're in a strong trending market. But we can also see that the crossing at the moment, the two in lines which could signify a trend change and here we have an example of such a happening when it started to turn more bullish i like to use it without the adx though as a simple crossover tool so when the blue is above the orange it's bullish and when the orange is above the blue it's bearish and you can see what happens when they cross they then create a more powerful trend change indicator The Darvas box indicator is something I stumbled across relatively recently and actually I found it a very effective technical analysis indicator. It's great for breakouts and I'm going to give you a brief overview now of what you need to know about this you know, relatively unheard of indicator. So what exactly is the Darvas box? Well, it's a great story, really, because it was an idea that came about from a guy called Nicholas Darvas, who actually was a ballroom dancer turned trader. So it just shows you that, you know, the retail world can also have great ideas and successes. But it's a theory from the 1950s and it's based around the idea of breakouts around highs and lows that brings in a trend following approach and it's got the box name because as you'll see shortly it's about the price moving outside of the box and this guy Nicholas Darvas turned ten thousand dollars to over two million in 18 months that's pretty phenomenal back then in I think it was in the like 1960s early 1960s he did this and he actually wrote a book how I made two million in the stock market and I've never seen the book, so it might be worth someone digging it out and seeing what it has to say. But it was a great idea. But over time, you know, like any idea, it has its critics. And they say it doesn't work in bearish markets. But from my experience, especially if you play around with it a bit, I think their suggestions and analysis is wrong. Um, and it has evolved from the 1950s and 60s. And I guess I've also evolved that concept on, but... I really like the Darvas box and you know so much so I might even turn it into a course. So the original rules are quite simple but remember it was based on his analysis of the US stock market. There's six points here of how you can come up with the original rules. 
think the problem I don't know how relevant they are today maybe someone would like to try that approach and back test it and see if it still worked as its raw state but I said mine's modified version which we'll see in a minute but basic rules you know looks for stocks making new 52 week highs then filters them that are on stocks that have pulled back with you know for three consecutive days from those 52 week highs and the new 52 week highs at the top of the box and the prior breakout to reaching the 52 week highs the low of the box and after that low is formed the price should not break that low for at least three days but then when the price breaks out to the upside you buy it and vice versa when it breaks to the downside you sell it that's the basics of the rules now let's see how that's evolved and how you can put that into your trade in a more modern context so I suppose I use the Darvas box purely as a breakout tool across all markets and time frames and you might find it a hard indicator to get your hands on and it's not available in all chart packages but it's definitely available in trading view so I've got my hands on it and I use it quite a lot so let's take a look at how I use it and how you could potentially use it in your trading so here we have our standard S&P 500 index chart, daily chart. I can actually over probably six, seven months of data. So we're going to apply the Darvas box to it. And we find that in our indicator section. This is trading view. So it's there. So I'm just going to undo it. So it's actual default settings on trading view come to five so the basic principles of our Darvas box here is we're going to get a buy signal as it breaks out and that's confirmed with that uh, tag there the buy tag and as we can see it breaks out nicely and goes up we have some semi weak buy signals we have some good strong ones which have a bad sell one there and you know a cell which we got in actually trailed down and went back into the box you know, we could have made some money there but it wasn't the strongest so Darvas box very good on its own but you can see it does have a few issues so to get around those I add other indicators so we could have something like a 50 moving average that then filters out those buy signals so we only take the buys if it's greater than the moving average and the sales if it's lower so we'd have you know only if it closes through that moving average by the way so we might have missed out on that one but we'd have got that one you know unfortunately we might have missed out on that one uh, but we would have got into that not great one but we'd have picked up that one that one that one and that one so some good good trade so i'd like to further add more um, substance to my decision making by adding further indicators so here i've got the awesome oscillator so again, in conjunction with this setup here, I'll be looking between flips between red and green. So we've got a buy here. Yes, it was green. Good to go. What happened at the red? Yes, we had red. Good to go. Red, good to go. But as we know, we had these other things up here making us either stay out or go into it. So I need a uh, the trend indicator on top of that. I'm just going to put on the DMI and that was set to 20 and that's going to give us a trend greens up reds down if greens greater than the red it's bullish trend and vice versa so we have our buy signal here it's green we're in green or green we're in what about those reds over there sell red red we were actually in that but we might not have got in because of the 50 moving average this red one here yes we were all in so you can see by putting together combinations of indicators around a principle, which is the Darvas box, you can make it stronger, more efficient. It's good on its own, but why not try it and experiment with it and see what you can come up with. Again, change those settings. If we you know, move it to a slower Darvas box, what does that give us? You know, doubling it to 10. Yeah, we've got some nice breakouts. Again, line it up with your other indicators on the chart. So something to think about something you might want to add into your trading 
donkey and bands you may or may not have heard of these but if you've ever heard about the story of the turtle traders which i thoroughly recommend you read especially for your education in the world of trading then they mastered these bands and made a fortune from them they're one of my favorites and i use a manipulated version of them to do my trading and some of my strategies but it overall is really simple concept it's just a price channel type of study and you can use it for entry and exits it's available on most charting packages i use it on trading view but the example win here is from e-signal um, one i used a while back uh, it can be used across all markets and the founder of this study is a richard donkian now normally in most packages charting packages that is the donkey bands default to a 20 period moving average and that establishes bands that plot the highest high and the lowest low and because of this signals can be produced to trade and a buy or long signal when the price action is greater and closes above the upper band and a short sell signal if the price actions less and closes below the lower band it's as simple as that but you can make it even more effective if the donkey bands has an offset functionality and normally i'll be using this and i use a five or a ten offset offset to create entry signals a bit similar to the ichimoku idea if you're aware of ichimoku but we're going to have a look at an example now to show you exactly um, what i mean by that So here we've got a 30 minute FTSE 100 candlestick chart. I've overlaid the Donkian band uh, indicator on top, which are the blue lines, the upper and the lower. It's a 20 Donkian, but I've used a five bar offset. And what does that mean? Well, if we look into where some of those arrows point to the upside, they give you, by moving it, with that offset a more obvious entry breakout point so i really like the donkian bands for breakout uh, trade strategies when they're moving outside the normal you know 20 period range but again you know you can off um not offset the numbers but you can manipulate and change those inputs to create more effective faster slower strategies longer term ones um, experiment and have a play around and see what you can find but donkey bands highly effective now I'm just throwing this one in here the awesome oscillator created by bill williams just an indicator to measure market momentum based off of a closing price and variables very similar to the macd here's its calculation if you're interested when we're using it in in you know normal circumstances we don't really need to know um what's it supposed to do well it's going to tell us really when to where well, it's going to just give us a buy and a sell signal um and it normally pictured in a histogram version but i like to ch change that to a line view as we will see but it is great for creating signals as you'll see so here's our gold friend again and we're going to add on the awesome oscillator we find it in our drop down there it is as you can see initially it comes in as a histogram view and i want to change that because i'd find that a little more complicated to translate into buy and sell signals and you'll see any second what that will look like just switch it to a line chart make it a bit more visible for us And then what we will do, we'll zoom in a bit to make it even easier to see. And now we've just got green lines for bullish and red lines for bearish. And you can see where the, the actual signals change. Here we got red to green. And as you can see in the price above, what a great signal that was. And you can see green to red and it turned bearish and what a strong signal that was so she is a tool you know let's go through the chart pick out some other examples it's really quite a strong 
tool simple but strong. Now I promised that we'd look at Fibonacci in a bit more detail so here we go. So there's a lot to it but all you really need to know it's all about behaviour and psychology and also about human and market interaction. It is in essence a self-fulfilling prophecy as to the reason why it works and if you want to get back into the nitty gritty of Fibonacci then you can do um, but you might have seen it when you throw a stone into a pond the ripples are full Fibonacci and it has been used throughout time in all sorts of application architecture etc but it does work however strange the concept is and it works in all time frames and that's really because technology now has made it very easy to use this type of tool over your charts and everybody is doing it. The key numbers you need to take away from Fibonacci are 0 0.618, 0 0.382 and the zero and one lines that you use to find the high and lows and it is a great tool for finding support and resistance points. That means it's very good for our risk management and trade management of our trades and is placed on top of the price chart and all you need to know is where the low and the high are and this is the problem of Fibonacci it's very discretionary but everyone's doing the same sort of thing and here you can see on the FTSE 100 here these arrows are around the points of Fibonacci lines and the price just keeps bouncing to and fro around these lines proving that the Fibonacci lines works and I could show you hundreds of charts like this they just work so all you need to do is find the obvious high and lows of the trend and then place the Fibonacci around these points and then that will draw the lines in between for you and as you can see on the FTSE 100 there it was a great tool to use to find support and resistance levels So how do we create the Fibonacci lines? Well they're placed as I said on top of the price and these lines are created automatically but you've got to find the high and low and I like to use a three different time period setup uh, to create a more accurate Fibonacci picture. Um, but like I said there at the bottom all charting software should have this Fibonacci functionality now it is very common used in all sorts of markets and types of trader. So this is my three step approach to setting the Fibonacci lines and we've got here the FTSE 100. It's a daily high Kanashi chart. You can use this approach across all charts, Renko, Line Break, Kagi, it works everywhere and first of all we need to break it down into time periods of the short medium and long term so I start with the long term first and go back over the previous year and look for the obvious highs and lows and we can see at the beginning of 2020 and to the spring of 2020 look like that obvious highs and lows so we find our Fibonacci setup lines we draw them on we've got a nice double top there on the FTSE 100 we draw them back down and to the low we place them like so and that's our long term support and resistance setup and is there anything obvious that we can see at the moment well there's around this 5900 area there's a lot of noise at the moment both to the upside and the downside support and resistance and then below that maybe 5450 around here and again up here at 6570 six, you know 6600 zone so that's the long term part of the equation and now we go to the medium term so that's like the last you know 3 to 6 months maybe well from 0 to 6 months I like to look just in case there's some obvious nearby highs and lows but if we go over that period and remember this isn't 100 percent exact science okay so if those highs and lows appear just either side don't worry you know of those time bands don't worry too much because this is a very discretionary subjective approach using Fibonacci so 
part two again we're going to look for our highs and lows so I can see this one back in June and the lows may be if we're going to take yeah, down here in September so that's going to be our next zone so again we draw on those Fibonacci lines and actually because the price has been ranging for a while on the FTSE 100 in between this 5 760 to 6230 these bands are going to be tight and it's starting to look a little bit messy and it's going to get messier still because we now move on to the third part which is to then draw on the short term stuff so zero to a month or so is plenty any short term obvious action well the lows are as of you know the part two and the highs may be here in mid-september so we draw that on there's our highs down to the lows now at the moment that looks a complete unreadable mess so what we do then is zoom in on the chart we pull it open and what we're looking for is overlaps in those three time periods because I believe the more those different sub times you know the long medium and short overlap the more important the numbers are so we've got you know double overlap here double overlap there double overlap there it's close here so these are where I'd be taking important numbers for so we've got 5760 uh, we've got this overlap here at 5950 another one up at 6140 6230 and 6355 so I'd be using those as either support or resistance you know for stops targets to give me a more I like to user friendly Fibonacci and I think more accurate way of using Fibonacci for setting those sort of levels so I hope that gives you some idea of how you can use Fibonacci in your trading and especially for you know trade and risk management work your way through the uh, following exercises they're all designed and built to build up your knowledge and experience of line break charts so you can better understand how to manipulate and use them and turn them into trading strategies and to your advantage later So our strategy example here is purely technical analysis based and it's built around the line break chart approach and it's going to cover entry, exit, if profitable or not and a initial stop loss and the components we're going to have a five line break chart set to daily, a nine period moving average and the awesome oscillator and we're going to use stop loss methodology number one so that means where we put the uh, stop loss level just below the reversal point of the change in the line break chart so let's take a look so here we have our basic strategy set up it's on WTI crude oil just to show that we can work not just from FX or stock indices that it works on all markets and it's a five line break chart and we haven't added too much to it really at the bottom we've got our awesome oscillator we've got a blue line there which is the nine moving average line and finally we've got a Bollinger Band which I've done some tweaking to I've sped it up to 10 periods I've moved the standard deviations down to one but I've also created an offset and you'll find out why I've done that in a moment so how does the strategy work pretty simple start from the bottom the awesome oscillator when it goes from red to green it's a buy and green to red it's a sell but at that same time it transitions over we look up to the line chart and we want to see the line chart bar crossing the nine moving average at the same time in the same direction as the awesome 
oscillator indicator is giving us. If that is the case, then we get into the trade and this is where the um, Bollinger Band comes into play. We stay in the trade until the price either goes back through the nine moving average with the opposite color bar to the trade direction or the price comes back into that Bollinger Band. So that's our ultimate stop, get out of the trade whether it's worked or not um, position. And the initial stop loss, I said we're using methodology one. So that means that we put our stop just below the turning points, the reversal points of the line break chart. So there you go, that's one really simple, easy strategy to adopt and put into practice. And again, take away some of these ideas and mix it in with your own, try different indicators, time frames. You know, this was on a daily chart, see what it how it works in you know, one hour, 15 minutes, maybe change the line break faster to two to give you more signals or slower to 10. This is really just to give you an idea of the potential of what you can do and build. We're now starting to formalize the plan of getting in and out of our trade using line break, but we need to use technical analysis, more specifically line breaks to help us with our trade and risk management is often overlooked and it is really important to get in the pennies in the bank and we're going to learn about how to use stops first with our line break charts. So what is a stop loss for those that don't know? Like I said in simplified terms it's you know it's an automatic tool that takes you out of a trade at a place where you think your trade is completely wrong. It helps you create some objectivity and systematization to your trading and it also will keep you in the game the rule is you know always use a stop that's one of the first things I was taught in trading so our first stop is going to be the initial stop loss when we enter the trade and that is the difference between the entry price and the level of the stop loss where you're going to place it. And I then determine that and call it a 1R, i.e. one unit of risk. And you can have multiples or fractions of this depending on how aggressive or risk averse you're being, but it's very useful in the trade management process and in your trading plan to define this from the outset. So I'm going to look at three methods here and all based around the line break chart. But the first one I would term aggressive, which is just line break chart only. Then a medium risk type of approach using just Bollinger Bands and then a more conservative approach using Fibonacci. All three of these methods are very easy to apply and be consistent with. But let's move on to method one, which is line charts only. This is a FTSE 100, three line break. Doesn't really matter what chart it is. And you can see these purple uh, lines that I've put on the chart. And you'll notice they're under every reversal point. Those are the ones that I have drawn on there. I've missed a few out, but this is for illustrative purposes. And this is an aggressive approach. And what you're saying is that because the market is turned and you're more likely to be right, then putting the stop just below the uh, turning point or just above the turning point as it goes back down is a actually quite safe place to do so. And it gives you a, a probably a higher risk reward trade and I would say though that that you know we I warned you earlier about just using price action on its own and this is why it's important to build up a strategy I'd use this type of approach the aggressive one if I had other indicators on top of the line break chart just allowing me to 
eradicate some of those um, stop areas that could potentially be wrong and cost you losing trades but overall very simple and easy quick approach to apply so our second approach just as easy and all I've done here is overlay a Bollinger band onto the line chart. I've expanded the standard deviations to 2.33 so that means that 90% of the price action should be within the bands. There's my theory on the stop. So just going to point out a few quick obvious levels for where you would apply this strategy and if the price is outside the bands uh, when you came to put on a trade or close to it then I would use one of the different methodologies here so what do I do I've got some trade examples here zoomed in on our FTSE 100 um, example then the one on the left I, is a long trade and all I do is look south of the band just the other side and put the stop in there and then for the corresponding short trade again just look above the band and put the stop in there and let it follow the price action down so again another simple easy to apply stop loss methodology our final example is just taking the knowledge we've learned about Fibonacci and using it for trade and risk management purposes very simple again you find the highs and lows of the recent period and you can do that medium long term short term if you want depending on how aggressive you want to get those Fibonacci stops at now I've taken a sort of a, a longish term view here on the FTSE 100 looking back over the whole of 2020 I've put the highs and the lows on there and I've then got some key Fibonacci lines to use for my stop so the first one if I was being super aggressive so that blue bar is the temporary bar if I was thinking of going long I might put it below the 23.6 line and the number there 5595 five, that's almost 5600 a round number the other side so maybe 5570 five, something like that for my stop if I want to be a bit more conservative under the zero line that's 4950 area so into the early 4900s maybe for a more conservative stop again a very simple easy approach to apply and as I say essential that you create some sort of methodology when you're creating um, trades and strategies for your trading some rules and tips then to take away that should be applied to all three of the methodologies and first of all that's just three methodologies there are many many more but those three could help you be more consistent and that's key is coming up with a consistent methodology and you really do have to make it as systematic as possible like your trade entry and exits the risk management trade management part should just be as systematic otherwise you know you're going to be too discretionary too random and you're not going to get the results or be able to test those results as you'd like to and one final point there take into account the volatility of the instrument you're trading if it's too volatile and you're too tight you're going to get out and you need taken out and you're going to lose more often than you're going to win too far away and you won't make the money you would like so there's got to be a balance in there understand what you're trading the market you're trading and apply a, an appropriate methodology to your trade management rules so finally how do we fit this whole approach into the bigger picture you know the risk management the portfolio that we're trading so again create systematic consistent rules and stick with them but I would risk between one and five percent of your total fund so that means you've got 100 to 200 goes of getting it right statistically very hard to blow 
your pot, especially if you use the lower 1% level. There are many methods when you get more experience to scale up winning more successful trades, for example, Kelly's criterion, but start with the fundamentals first, get into a rhythm, a routine around um, the size you're using and be consistent with it and stick with it. That one R in the stop loss section will be the amount of risk you're allocating from your trade. So for example, if you had a £10,000 pot to trade with and risking 1%, one R would equate to £100. So again, another part of the process to add into your trading plan, but I can tell you from experience, just as equally as important as coming up with a great idea of how you get in to a trade because you'll make and break your strategy by how you get it to the finish line. So with any trade, there's a process that you're going to carry out. It's going to start with your research, where you're going to find potential trades. You're going to produce a short list of those trades. You're going to work out the risk management, trade management, the portfolio sizing of them. You're going to set those. You're going to execute the trade. You're going to then manage the trade through to its exit. And it's either going to be profit or loss. You're going to record your results and not a lot of people do this and it's hugely important is you've got to record your results and analyze it to improve your performance in your trading and you spin that cycle round and round again but the analysis of your results is often overlooked and shouldn't be because they give you vital clues as to where you're succeeding and failing and where you can tweak your work and trading and strategies to produce more optimal results. So some measures you could use to test whether you're doing well or not, or, you know, win-loss ratio, sharp ratio, risk return of the trade, the holding period, whether you win more long or short trades, what your average wins your losses and what your biggest and average drawdown and how many trades you're doing. They're just some of the statistics you could use. There's thousands you could get into, but again, make it consistent, the process, analyze what you're doing, put that into your plan and follow it, put that into that trading process diagram we've just looked at and use it and use it effectively. There's no point analyzing it if you don't do anything with it. So here's some, there's some starters for you. Go away, build your plan, put them into it. So important uh, tip here, always have a trading plan and treat it like you would running a business. You wouldn't start a business without working out the costs and all the variables involved, whether it would be a success, do the same for your trading. So we're going to go through a few examples now um, to put different combinations of indicators, time frames and line break setups together to get you thinking about how you could build and run out your own trading strategies using line break. Example one is going to be on the US stock Amazon and it's a four hour line break five line break chart example two is going to use a multi time frame approach on a stock indices in this instance the Nasdaq 100 and our third example is going to be a fast line break set up on the five minute chart on WTI crude oil and I'm really eking out the line break input to a long 10 setup. So let's move on to the first example. Our first example is another straightforward one. It's on Amazon US stock. It's on a four hour line break chart and the line break is set to five. And this is just illustrating adding on further technical indicators that you might not have thought to use. And really all I've done here is add on a donkey and band set to 5-2 and a Darvas box method set to 3. And all we are looking for is for the Darvas box to give us a buy or a sell. We go into the trade and we follow that trade until the price returns back within the donkey and bands. That's the get out. Of the trade and the initial stop loss was method one so we put it just below 
the turn of the line break chart or the nearest low or high depending on which direction you're trading in but this is just another simple example showing you how it could look if you were trading US stocks for example our second example involves adding in different time frames so we're trying to get a sort of momentum flow approach into our trading window so we've got four hour one hour 15 minute we've got donkey and offset five two two Bollinger Bands, a slow one and a fast one. And we've got an RSI for timing purposes with a moving average crossover approach. And we're using initial stop loss method two, which is the Bollinger Band approach. In our second example, we're using a multi time frame approach. The chart on the left is a three line break chart on the Nasdaq 100 US stock market. The middle chart is a one hour three line break on the Nasdaq 100 US stock market. And our chart on the right is our actually trading window, which is in the 15 minute period. We have an RSI to the bottom of it with a moving average crossover approach. And we have a fast Bollinger Band, which is a light blue color there, set to 1015, and a slow Bollinger Band set to 20 periods and a standard deviation of 2.33. So how are we going to use all of this? Well, the first part is to take the graph, the chart on the left, and what we're looking for is we've got a Donkian Band, which is the purple line there and we're looking for the line break chart to be above that um, band for a long trade and below it for a short trade then we go to the one hour chart in the middle and again we're looking for the same thing above or below and if those two are in the same direction as they are in this example currently both bullish we then move to the final chart on the right hand side to do our trades and the rules here are we look for the RSI crossover and again that would have to be bullish as are as because the other two charts are showing bullish flow and trend momentum into that window we once we have our RSI crossover we also want the price to break out of the faster um, Bollinger Band set up in the center there in the same direction and we're also going to use that faster Bollinger Band to get out of the trade when the price comes back into it and our initial stop loss will be using the slower Bollinger Band and will be just above or below that line for our stop loss depending on which direction we're taking so once again another approach another filter methodology for the line break chart and hopefully showing you there different market how we've mixed up um, time frames we've used a different line break chart the three line break chart and we've used different indicators in different ways to give us some different results our final example is just really to illustrate how you can play with the inputs really and we've got two Bollinger Bands the RSI 14.9 crossover and using initial stop loss method too so similar as before but in one time frame but this time we're just tweaking the inputs to the line break chart so the purpose of our last uh, example example three is just to show you again how to play with the inputs a bit more to give you a different perspective now we've got a five minute line break chart here I've rolled it all the way back to a 10 line break chart and the reason for that is it shows a more smooth trend which I hope you hopefully you can see as well and how do we get into this trade well we use the RSI moving average crossover at the bottom once we have a signal there we then wait for the right direction in the line break chart and here you've got two choices you could go in 
straight away you could draw trend lines on for that breakout or you could wait until the price breaks through the faster Bollinger Band setting which is 10.15 in the middle and how do we get out of that trade again we use the 10.15 Bollinger Band to get out when the price moves back within it and finally for the stop loss same as in example 2 using the slower Bollinger Bands set to 20 2.33 standard deviations and depending on which way round we're going we're either going long or short just by putting it the other side of the bands so here's another example of a really fast time frame giving you a lot of action in any one period and also being able to see how you can smooth out the noise to make it a more easily traded um, less stressful more clear-cut type of approach so hopefully over those last three examples you've seen some sort of ideas that you can apply yourself take with you adapt adopt or you know just take these ones that I've given you here and try and apply them yourselves and see what sort of results you get maybe back test them first before going live try them out again like I said it's this is really just for ideas around the line break um, chart showing you what charting packages can do what potential they have and what you can generate nowadays you know because of this you know really powerful trading strategies using the line break approach let's first of all talk about firming up the trade exit rules because uh, I, I want to highlight some important points here um, the main approaches that we've seen on this course are by using Bollinger Bands, Fibonacci and Line Break you know, where the price is reverse and the important point to take away is you, you really have to make it as systematic and consistent as possible for greater trading success if you don't you're not going to get anywhere with trading now there are countless other approaches that you could use. You might use risk return, for example. You now you look at trades at one to one, but that's very hard to get right every time. Rarely do trades actually hit your target, and it also depends on your type of strategy and the markets you're trading. So it's a difficult one to use, but a good guide. There's other indicators you could use, or you could adopt a trailing stop approach using moving averages, indicators such as parabolic SAR that we haven't looked on on this course pivot points, Fibonacci, etc. Like I said, there are so many different approaches, but, the, and it comes with a warning, and I see this time and time again with traders, and they have a great strategy idea, but they never obey the exit rules. They just don't do what the strategy says, and they end up losing. They end up not making money, and they wonder why, and it's quite simply... And just not following what the strategy says so please if you can spend all that time putting something together then if it says get out get out simple as that otherwise you're not going to be able to test your system you're not going to get the results you're not going to make the money and it will just become a gamble so you need to learn how to lose properly it's going to be part of trading it's tough and it's psychological but it's a skill you're going to need to master so make it systematic and make it consistent whatever you do in all parts of trading and designing strategies systematic and consistent now let's summarize the rules for creating and running a strategy using the line break chart so our first rule is don't rely just on the pure price of line break action add indicators and other tools to support the evidence of the initial line break chart remember the rule of collinearity when you're putting other indicators and tools together and spend time creating the optimal line break setup around inputs times markets etc but don't backfit to make it work some of the worst strategies are those that pick a very small period of time to try and make it look like it works but when you actually come to execute it you only end up losing but 
as a guideline to not try to get it to backfit, you need to be able to make it you know, work across different markets and assets. You've got to make it as systematic as possible. And don't forget to create those risk and trade management rules as these are just as important as any part of the trading strategy approach. So then you want to decide on the indicators you want to use. Try combinations to see what works. Then backtest and record your results. And if you're not a programmer, then you could do it by eyeballing the numbers, writing down the data into a spreadsheet. But really you need to know whether you've got an edge or not. An edge meaning, you know, that extra bit of odds on your side that make it a winning strategy. And if you can't backtest and you just want to go live on it, then assume that you start from a win-loss ratio of 50-50 and that you have a 1% edge over the market and then track and record your results. But you know, if you're not going to track and record your results, then don't follow that approach because again, you're just wasting your time and you're probably going to end up losing. And then over time, you can build a track record and see what works, adjust accordingly, sort of on the on the fly. And you know those backtest results that you might get, you might see slippage around costs, um, time, execution, all that sort of thing. But when putting together a strategy, like anything in life, you've got to ask yourself the who, what, why, where, how, and when questions. And when you've got satisfactory answers to those, then you know you should be able to go live with your trading. So when you go live and you're still unsure, maybe class your strategy as experimental and take that R number from instead of one R down to half an R. So you're still trading live, getting the feel of the trading, learning how it works, putting some money on the line. But again, you're collecting data, information, so you can work your strategy, see the results, see where to make it better, where it's not doing well, and then evolve that strategy over time. And it's a constant process of evolution in your trading. And using line break charts is no different. What works today might not work tomorrow. So you've always got to be tracking the results, the data, see what works, see what doesn't, make those changes. But if you've got all that together, you've got your own trading plan down, you nailed it, you you apply it systematically and consistently, then you stand the best chance of making a success in your trading. Don't think of the line break charts as a standalone chart type that can't interact with any other chart type. Yeah, if your strategies are in bar charts, candlestick charts, any type of charts, you could use uh, line break charts as a supplementary tool, maybe that's giving you support and resistance levels as a trend filter, or maybe even as an exit tool. So here's a really simple example. It's the US dollar against the Norwegian krona. On the left, we have the four hour line break chart with the Donkian band 52 breakout set up. And on the right, we just have a Heiken Ashi chart in the one hour with an awesome oscillator below. So we're going to use the four hour line break as the trend filter. So if the price is below the Donkian band, it's a negative short trade potential position and if it's above it it is a long trade so at the moment the price you can see is below the bands so that means we would look for any short trades in our faster time frame the one hour chart and how would we get into that trade we might use the automate oscillator going from green to red to give us that signal and we would be in we could also flip back to the four hour chart for our stop loss levels. We know that if the price goes back within the bands, we're wrong. So we could actually put the stop just inside that band that it broke out on. So there's another idea for you. 
use line break charts as supporting evidence to other strategies uh, and there's thousands of ways you can take it but just another simple idea for you just a bit for all those um, I suppose techies and programmers out there who like to automate their trading I'm one of those and line break charts do lend themselves very nicely to be automated into a systematic algorithmic process so if you can program then the world is your oyster a lot of trading now a huge amount of volume of the world's flow is through these programs and you know such languages as python and c++ all very popular um, i use python and ruby on rails and python is the current pick of the month at the moment but i suppose a tip to end this section with is that i find that getting your hands on data and you'll hear the term big data very often is the most tricky part of the process especially if you know about trading and programming then that's really the last piece of the jigsaw and getting hold of quality data that is affordable and reliable is very difficult and how can you do this well you could use a broker's api that's what i do and that gives me access into live real-time streaming data or you could use other cheaper services like QNL or research based trading data hubs like Quantopian. And like I said, I think you'll probably find it easiest to use the broker option, but that is totally down to you. And of course, if you want to find out more, get in touch with me at the Stop Hunter around this algorithmic automation approach. So for all you budding portfolio managers out there who want to work for some of the best hedge funds on the planet, then I just thought I'd let you know on the inside what you need to get to to get through their front door. Well, they use a huge barrage of quantitative analysis to work out whether your strategy or program is any good to start with. But if you know your statistics, they use a measure called sharp ratio is one of their favorites and they'll be looking for your know, three plus as that number so if you know about the sharp ratio you'll know exactly what i mean there if you don't go away and and look at it it's a good actual ratio um, bit of statistical analysis to add into your trading plan anyway to check if your results are working or not but on top of you know hypothetical numbers you know, back tested results, you're going to need some live trading results with some proven track history. So it's a tough job to get into one of these hedge funds these days. But if you've got the alpha, you've got the edge, then their door is always open. Work your way through the uh, following exercises. They're all designed and built to build up your knowledge and experience of line break charts. So you can better understand how to manipulate and use them and turn them into trading strategies and to your advantage later. Good successful trading is not just about taking a course, it is a journey. And because of that, you need longer term support and content resource available to you to progress you through that journey hopefully to a successful finishing line now at the stop hunter i've put together all of that sort of stuff on our website www.thestophunter.co.uk so in this uh, section we're just going to have a quick look at the website to see what is available to you so welcome to the Stop Hunter website. And the first thing you'll notice is that we do cover off a lot of markets, stocks, and that's US, global, cryptocurrencies, all sorts of markets there, NFTs as well, Forex, commodities, and stock market indices. So we cover a pretty broad spectrum for you there. 
Now scrolling down the home page you'll notice eight blocks and they are the areas that we really cover in some depth. Now over on the right hand side we have fintech and consultancy services so we you know, go out to professional traders, institutions, schools, universities and come up with trading financial markets solutions teaching programs for them there so you can click on those uh, blocks if you would like to find out more now we have our e-learning offering and if you clicked on there it would take you through to the other courses that we provide at the stop hunter and quite excitingly the youtube channel is one that we've been working on quite a bit over the last six months and there's hundreds of videos and a lot of content there for you that will support your you know trading journey and your objectives in there so I recommend that you go and take a look at that then we've got four other blocks that really get you into the nitty-gritty of whatever markets you want to trade we've got Forex stocks and options uh, cryptos and NFTs and my um, bread and butter the technical analysis um, area so if you want to learn more about technical analysis click on the link there and that will take you through to the relevant page once there there's a lot to explore and if we scroll down the page we can find out what's available to you uh, simple questions and answers why learn technical analysis and those resources that I was talking to you about there's free courses on YouTube there's links to our e-learning specifically the technical analysis courses and you know how to access the YouTube channel and more specifically I get this asked quite a lot you know what charting package should you use so done a bit of an overview there of the reasons and ideas for selecting a charting package and down the bottom there the charting package that I use in the courses in YouTube and in my own trading trading view with links through to find out more on that platform so if you want to learn more about the forex market and what resources we've got for you there then hit that blue block on the home page and then scroll down within that page and you'll find videos on your know, reasons to trade forex forex trading explained a trading a trade training course coming soon onto the youtube channel links again to the youtube uh, channel you know a video on how to find a good forex broker top 10 tips and then the brokers that we recommend to you to be trading forex now we've got trade nation that are cfd spread better we've got forex.com if you're a u.s citizen wanting to trade the forex markets then we've got city index and forex vox that are also cfds and sped brett providers so hit that yellowy gold block on the home page and it'll take you to the cryptos and nft section now i'm hoping we've got you covered here uh, we've got you know loads of stuff on courses traders club which we'll talk about in the minute upcoming you know content and then the exchanges that i recommend and use myself you can see you click on those and it will take you through to them if you want to discover more about those and trading bots i'm heavily into the trading bots world i'm going to produce some courses on that as well soon but you know if you haven't got the programming skills and you want to get straight into automating your trading then here's five possible recommendations for you to explore again click on the blocks and it will take you through to them and then to finish off i've also got some stuff on securing your cryptocurrencies hard wallets and we recommend the use of Treasor in here and there's some offers down there for you to follow as well so hopefully we got you pretty well sorted on the crypto nft space then hitting the light green block on the home page is going to take you through to stocks and options and again you know we've got a lot of course an extra free content here how to um, learn to trade options uh, stock markets you know the ins and outs of how they work traders club again and the stocks that we cover you know there's a pretty good selection of countries there through the brokers that we use us uk european stocks swedish norwegian finnish swiss canadian south african 
I said plenty to choose from wherever you are in the world and if you want to trade US markets directly stocks and options then we use first trade and they have international accounts which can allow you to trade those markets from other places around the world then we've got a couple of spread bet CFD providers that give you access into other markets around the world trade nation and city index South African stocks US Scandinavian Swiss Canadian those ones I mentioned before now if you want to find out more about them click those visit links they're all ones that I personally use and recommend so that's the last of the sectors now I want to take you through to the traders club so a recent development at stop hunter is the traders club now we've run traders clubs before in different guises but this one is totally free to join on discord it's very easy to set up you just go onto the block click on the link and then follow through what discord tells you to do it's totally free like i said and it covers really everything analysis research you know exclusive content education offers competitions the whole lot ideas and you know i put some webinars and videos in there as well for you to follow and i suppose one of the big plus points is it's a community and there's like-minded traders you know, all talking to one another share your thoughts opinions fears you know ideas you know all of that lot in this uh, club and I'm also on there pretty much all the time so I will pipe in every now and again do a bit of analysis content and you know I'm there to be asked questions so it's a very good free resource for you to sign up for so like I say just click on the link and follow it through and I hope to see you on there so we're also on all sorts of social media and you can click on the buttons there on the home page to join those um, different resources we've got LinkedIn got Twitter Instagram Facebook obviously YouTube and we've recently added TikTok as well and if you want to email me directly get in touch directly then use that email below their info at the stophunter.co.uk so I hope that little taster has given you an idea of the sort of support and resource we can offer you along your trading journey so hope you found that useful and I look forward to hearing from you and getting in touch well hey congratulations you've now finished the course I hope you found it beneficial but before we finish off we've got a few more final pieces to cover off so you now should have a good grasp on the line break charts and how they work and fit into today's world of trading and hopefully you can now see how effective this simplified charting type can be to give you that potential trading edge we've looked at it working across all markets time frames and different styles of trading which it could be adopted to to give you that different angle and edge on your trading you should also now getting on be getting on your way to mastering these charts they are quite simple but effective but you know how to construct them how to break them down how to manipulate them to be able to construct and build effective line break strategies so now that's really all left to do is to take those learnings from the course and apply them into the real world of trading so i put this next part in all my courses and it's really just a reminder for what to do next and after doing a course like this you've got to take some time off and let it all sink in over the next few days but don't let it drop all together within the next two weeks you want to be developing and finalizing your trading plan deciding those line break strategies the objectives the goals that you want to pull from trading with line break um, got to work in things like time availability lifestyle don't forget to set those trade and risk management rules the controls the processes and remember it's like a business plan 
or go into your bank manager and ask him for a loan. You wouldn't go to the bank manager without a, you know, a written product of what you were going to do and how you're going to achieve it. You know, the who, what, why, how, where, when questions. Same in trading. Get it down into a plan that you commit to and measure yourself by. Then over the next month, if you haven't already, get those brokers sorted, get your account funded, sort out the hardware if you need to, computer, internet, workstation environment, and make sure you've got the right software in there as well, the charting package, spreadsheets that you use to analyze your results, and any other resources that you feel valuable to your trading. And then most importantly, it's time to start trading properly. Go live, get your feet wet, you know, get down and dirty inside the world of trading, get some results under your belt, measure them, and, you know, really get stuck in. And taking that even further still, remember to commit to that trading plan, keep those results in great detail, you will find them super beneficial, and use any resources highlighted to you at the Stop Hunter, and remember that trading is a journey. It's not just about doing this course. It's going to take you some time to become a master of trading and make money profitably and consistently. But don't give up. Persevere. Stick with it. And you'll find it a very rewarding experience. So in summary here, get as much experience as you can under your belt with the line break strategies that you're going to deploy. Learn and keep learning. Keep that passion up for trading. Get a mentor if it's not someone like me, someone who you'd like to work with and you can seek help from. Use the resources available to you. Speak off and feed off like-minded people. Remember, trading shouldn't be a matter of life and death. It is a serious business, but it should also be a lot of fun. <laughs>